Hey, it's Chase from On The Table Gaming, and today we're taking a look at the Visions in the Flames 2023 for A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. And we are joined by the game designers for A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game, Michael Chanel and Fabio Curry. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thank you very much, Chase, for having us once again. Chase, as always, it's a pleasure to see you. So this uh, this update has a, a lot of really interesting tweaks in here. Uh, after coming out from some of the bigger updates, for example, and then the major, the original 2021 update, this one's a little bit more on the petite size, but it's something that people are already calling the abilities update. Uh, and so as we jump in to talk about some of the changes here, thinking about maybe in the context of abilities, you know, what do you see this update meaning for the general like, state of the game? Well, I think this is a very healthy update that shows once again the health of the game i think that's the word we want to use because we're, we're changing abilities that affect most factions right so if we make a change to war cry basically all factions have at least one incidence of of war cry right and that's really good because we we've had time to see how 2021 settled in and now we we, we get to do these changes once again by doing these we believe that we can fix things that um, instead of giving individual attention to every single unit, uh, it's easier sometimes to change things across the board. And that, once again, will help with the longevity of the game. Well, I mean, so you have your the 2021 update that we did, which, you know, that was our biggest overhaul that we've ever done with the game. Uh, before that, though, you know, the two years, two, two and a half years prior to that, and also the, you know, the proceeding after that, you know, these are the standard type of updates you'll see where, you know, everything that everything is going to be a big drastic overhaul here. It's just going to be tweaking, getting things to a stable place and then tweaking the stuff that needs tweaking. And in this case here, you know, as the game grows, naturally the nature of updates is going to grow with it as well because, you know, the first year we did patches, we had four factions. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're up to, you know, nine plus. So we've over doubled the number there. And then also the units in between each faction there as well. So typically, you know, when we're looking at these things, it comes down to really problematic abilities that will appear in multiple places across, you know, um, various, uh, the entire game. Typically, it's not really a case often of a specific unit is just being such a big major issue. It's typically an ability that is just overperforming or in some cases underperforming, you know, that's just showing up multiple times across, you know, consecutively across the game. So that was our, one of our major focuses this time. Now, of course, we did do as we standard do, um, take a look at units that are overperforming or underperforming. But in this case, you know, we also had to key in, is it because of the abilities in question or is it just, you know, the standard operandi that, you know, okay, this thing is not as powerful as we intended, not seeing as much play, or if it's the opposite case, you know, this thing is just dominating everywhere and, you know, then explore why. And I think, you know, when you're talking about changing abilities, you know, Fabio, you mentioned like these abilities are across many factions here. And so maybe taking just a few of the ones that stood out to you the most as most impactful. I mean, you have changes to things like Outflank, uh, Hardened, Knightly Vows, Expert Duelist, Warcry even. And then, you know, the, uh, the, the hot topic one, maybe Relentless here. Which of those do you see as most impactful? Well, I'd say they're two that are that I feel are going to be most impactful overall but only time will tell right but in my mind outflank is one that's going to really shake things up where um, most units and attachments without flank weren't being chosen right and we don't believe that the problems are in the units it's so the problem must be in outflank <laughs> that's our conclusion so with those appearing that will hopefully shake things up a lot in deployment and in in how people are going to think um especially in round two and three right which are very tactical and very uh, maneuvering routes right and also in war cry where Warcry was too prevalent, where players were generally picking units with Warcry. So we did change that a little bit. And I believe that's going to make other units, attachments, and combinations shine more now that there's not so much of a spotlight on Warcry. For myself, that's a very tricky question because, you know, it's, it's, everything has to be taken uh, as a total. You know, if we only changed one thing, then okay, sure, we could just talk about that. But it's everything cascading in on itself. You know, there are going to be little ripple effects that come out of, you know, everything. The one that comes to my mind, though, is the kind of, I guess, the easiest to kind of explain is coming down to Relentless, where that is, you know, that was one of the few effects in the game that would still give you just basically straight up a free extra activation and set of actions. That is something we generally try to call out 
um, in the 2021 update, like it's still in the game, but it was cut down compared to what you would see previously. Relentless still gives you an easy activation for that. And at the time, you know, during with the balancing and everything, it seemed like it was okay, but clearly it's, you know, there was just, it was becoming a default go-to choice and shaping things up. And that's exactly the type of thing we don't want to see. So, you know, that was one of the ones there. But the thing is, like, I don't even really want to focus on that one too much because even if you just remove Relentless from the game entirely, you know, that's, there's still everything else to consider and take into, you know, effect there of what that would do. Um, so, you know, if I, I, I really, it's really a hard thing just pinpointing any single thing that I would go like, oh, this is going to have the biggest shakeup. Because like, as Fabio said with Outflank, I, that's always an ability that is very, I remember even from the original times of it, it always swung from this is probably too strong and can dominate and change too many things to uh, unfortunately it's current state where it's like, eh, I really don't want to do this for a number of reasons. You know, giving up activation advantage, the sheer timing of it, all the things I've got to do with it, you know, and we're trying to find that middle ground here because we have seen the devastating effects they can have if it's left rampant. And we definitely don't want to swing things in that direction. So I really feel like this was kind of one of the things for this overview here was just, you know, try some little minor tweaks here, touch the things that, um, that people want to see, you know, kind of messed with here, and then we'll see what it goes. And, you know, uh, cause we have in the past, uh, a couple times swung too heavy on things. So, you know, we, we really want to see where just things go here. You know, people are getting accustomed to, uh, you know, the fact that we do our updates, it is always one of those things that every year, you know, that we do these, it, there's that player base that either has just started, or I understand that COVID has been a thing in the last few years, like 2016 was seven years oh ago. Chase. God. <laughs> <laughs> Some people still like, don't realize that. So when we do our once a year updates, you know, we still have people that, you know, come around and go like, oh my God, they're changing the game constantly. It's like once a year. And we have people that are usually clamoring for more than that. It's always that balance, you know, you know, catering to people because, yes, there are people that just want monthly updates and everything. And then there's that very vocal uh, group that's like, oh, my God, the game is changing too often. I can't keep track of anything. This is awful. Dude, it's it's once a year, 12 months. Well, it's kind of the curse, right, though? And this is a game that I think appeals to both war gamers and board gamers, right? When you have a game that has such an easy entrance point, now you get to deal with the challenges of you know, both people's expectations, right? So, you know, thinking of actually uh, new people coming in, right? As this game has grown in popularity, um, one thing I was thinking about as I looked across some of these abilities was things even like Rally Point. Uh, there are some abilities that not, you know, only, but sometimes are kind of heavily represented in some of the core starter sets. When you're making game design decisions, like to, to change uh, abilities or update things, you know, how much of a concern is it that when players are starting into the game, that they still have like a really not easy, but an effective entry point, right? Where they can pick up the starter and they're feeling competitive right from the start. Do you ever worry that with changes to the abilities and updates in the games and these updates that that entry ramp uh, is going to shift at all? Or is that something you keep in mind as you're doing these changes? See, I, I really like this question. And I think some of what Michael said in the last answer uh, is also true here, where it's all about balance, right? And we need to have the, the units in the core box and the attachments inside the the, the game balance, right? And and the game meta in, in, in general, right? But at the same time, it, it is true that we have to keep an eye to see that if the core box is still accessible to players, right? So you, you mentioned Rally Point really quickly, and I'd, I'd like to actually hook on that if right, that's and okay. And I think maybe in general, for some reason my mind is gravitating towards like Asha Greyjoy or Mance Raider, um, you know, standing kind of the far. Yeah, I think those are great examples, exactly, where um, they're and these are very like morale um poor in morale units right that come in these boxes so yes um having rally point did we did use that as a way to help out players starting out you know that are buying a starter box yep but we we believe that rally point was was affecting um too much um the, the game in general the game state so we we did change that we've added boisterous charisma i think to in both cases which I think serves the the flavor of the characters, right? And it fits them really well still. And they still perform their role in the army, but they don't outshine other units, right? But this is a great ability still for starting players, right? You, you can still use Mance Raider to kind of fill in gaps of where the free folk generally fail. 
Well, so actually just, you know, jumping on what Fabio said there, that's kind of my position on this as well, is an ability uh, or a single commander should not define how you're going to run a faction. And typically, you'll see with most of the events here, uh, you will have an ability that is basically shoring up the weakness of a faction. And that is what people are latching on to is like, this is what I'm going to run. Free folk have notoriously bad morale. It's the, it's the worst spread across the game. Same thing with Greyjoys to a lesser extent. But in both cases, what do you see mainly being run? The thing that shores up that weakness. So it feels like instead of people adapting to the weakness and going, okay, this is what my army is bad at. Let me focus in X, Y, Z other areas. They're instead looking for the easiest option to shore up that weakness, fill in that hole, and then just go like that. You'll see the same thing with Night's Watch when it comes to Relentless, is that Night's Watch is inherently supposed to be a lower activation army with, you know, and work around that fact. Well, instead of like playing different, you know, styles here or, you know, leaning into that, instead players will typically just find the workaround for it. It's like, okay, I've got low activations. I have a tool here that gives me more activations. Let me lean heavy into that. I've got low morale here. Okay, let me find a tool that will lean heavy into that. Yeah, it makes sense. And uh, you know what? You see, Fabio, you said the M word, so I got to jump in here. Mance uh, got, some, got some changes. And, you know, the free folk players out there are uh, watching very carefully here. Um, so I was going through the update and I was like, oh, it looks like they're removing a lot of the abilities or when the, the character dies you award VP. And I was like, oh, interesting. Is that like an entire shift away from this? And then I get to Mance Raider and I see the king is dead on him. And the, you know, full disclosure, I, I haven't been able to run him yet like this. I have to, I have to test it out myself. Well, you know, what's what's the deal there? You're right. Come, come after my boy Mance. Not not Foreman <laughs> for saying, hey, but... Hang on, hang on. I, I, I want to jump in on this one. I want to jump on this one because this is a prime opportunity because Fabio, an entire year of problems. And I, how can I pass? <laughs> uh, I will say this direct quote. Fabio hates Mance Raider. Well, that's uh, that's the gauntlet has been thrown down. I kind of knew, actually, now that you said that, because he, he had that Baratheon streak in him. And Baratheons historically have not been super kind to uh, the, the free folk. I mean, they didn't help him a little bit, but they, they ran them down the other side of the wall. So, Fabio, your secret's out. We're on to you. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I guess Baratheons are still merciful, right? Uh, as long as there is justness in it, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way and... What are the free folk with their king beyond the wall without a king, right? Like, who is the glue of the free folk, right? I think this fits <laughs> Mance the best out of all of them, like, right? Um, even more the Joffrey where where the Lannisters are kind of hoping he dies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everybody loves Mance, except for Fabio. So we don't want him to die, but we'll see. Okay, so I love having these conversations where you're talking about all like, the, them the thematic things, right? Um, and I think that's initially, especially what drew me to the game was getting to kind of fulfill the fantasy of playing, you know, with my Game of Thrones, a song of ice and characters on the table here. Are there any other changes that you see in the, uh, this update that you feel were like particularly flavorful? Oh, that's a great question. I'd say there is a, one that's simple and not shiny, but I, I, I do think it's very flavorful where it's the glory seeker where before he had rally cry where... It was supposed to be more of a supportive role, but where's the glory in that, you know? And now he has iron resolve and stubborn tenacity where he really wants to push his unit to glory, right? And I think that's a, a very flavorful one. That might be my favorite, you know? And it was cool before the rally cry, like, you know, healing the wounds, but then the idea of like getting in the thick of things and being like, you know, he's about smashing face. That's awesome. Are there any lessons that you learned from previous updates that are uh, integrated into the abilities that you've changed here? Maybe considering even things like Expert Duelist. Hmm. Well, I'd say that we did learn a lot throughout the years, for sure, right? And once again, it's 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 very hard to have a war game exist for so long, right? We, we've reached a, like a mark where very few games have, have passed, you know, like we're, we're out for seven years. So there is a lot of learning. And Expert Duelist is one where we really took player perception into account. You know, it, it's something where in in our math, at least, we thought it was fine. But um, once again, we, we were checking in. Generally, players don't like Expert Duelist when they're, when they're playing against it, of course, right? Everyone <laughs> loves using it. And, and we felt that actually they were right, not in the sense of 
that there wasn't a gamble, right? So now we, we simply by changing it from a three plus to a five plus, we believe that that creates this this gamble of how you want to use your expert dualist. And and that's interesting, right? That that really, it's, it's the same effect. We just changed a number, but we do believe that that's enough to make this, this ability that was creating this negative experience into something actually very positive. We're, we're very hopeful for an <laughs> expert dualist now. And now you're taking into account things like player perception. Um, a lot of times there are, you know, frequently asked questions or questions that come up. Um, is a an FAQ something that we might also be seeing coming out in, you know, a relatively short timeline to go with this, this update? In regards to the FAQ, so the initial plan is we have our rollout here. Uh, we know that there are going to be questions that arise from some of these changes because that's the nature of things. But in addition to that, a lot of the existing questions that might exist in the community can also be you know, fixed by some of these changes. Ergo, if we released one immediately here, we're basically would be basing it on speculation based on questions that are asked and also which ones are potentially resolved here. So instead of releasing FAQs in rapid succession here, like over the course of just a few weeks, we're just holding off to give the uh, patch update here a couple weeks before we um, actually release an FAQ for that. So that will be coming out very soon, in just a few weeks. But uh, we didn't want to release at the same time here because, again, it's <laughs> it's a volatile thing here. You might have changes that result from the, uh, from the changes here that people ask new FAQ questions. And then we have to evaluate, okay, we made these changes. Are these questions still relevant? Are people still asking them? You know, things like that. So instead of, you know, get that out, uh, immediately, we're giving that a small delay between the update and then. Well, you know, after we heard that blistering uh, hatred for, for Mance, which I will never recover from, um, is there a favorite change that you have, Michael? And then I suppose you can go to Fabio. But Fabio, if you say Mance, that's it. It's, it might be it might be over. I really don't think I am <laughs> stating enough his rampant hatred for Mance. Like, it's severe. <laughs> now I know that you know when we were you know when we were looking at the, the mans with the patches, you know there were several several different things that we came to, and this is actually um, just speaking very candidly here. This breaks one of my just general notes for when we typically do changes, and that's something we've talked about in the past, uh, Chase, you and I, and I guess the community is people really hate negatives attached to things, like the original Joffrey, for example or really any version of Joffrey, we had to always be very careful about attaching any negatives to what he did because people, it drives people away. Like it, it pushes people away from even trying it. And it almost doesn't matter how strong you make an effect. If there is almost any negative attached to it, then that's going to d deter people from even, you know, trying it or playing it or anything. And that has remained uh, true. And that's always something that comes up when we're looking at like, balancing units, which is why, you know, Matt's gaining another negative there. Um, you know, that was not a decision that was taken lightly. And, you know, while the, some of these things are very thematic, like when Daenerys or Joffrey or any of these, you know, big important guys, whenever they, they had negatives attached to them for various reasons, it is very thematic, but it is also one of those things that like, we can still keep these characters thematic without the negative because the negative is also really pushing people away from gameplay. And, you know, that's always that careful balance there as well. Which is, you know, okay, how flavorful do we keep things versus, you know, how much do we lean into like just game balance? Because a lot of the times, you know, those little flavorful things are what going to, or, or what's going to define characters, but they're also typically to the biggest stouts when it comes to, um, you know, actual like just math gameplay. Having said that, one thing that I know that from the initial like release is, you know, people have commented that like, well, why doesn't every single unit have like a unique ability? You know, I'm seeing these things that were very clearly belonging to this one faction. They're now showing up in other factions. And to that, I kind of say, well, they belong to one faction when we had two factions. Now that we have nine plus, like uh, the abilities repeating represent tactics. Like there's never been a case here where, you know, a an ability is married to a faction. It just kind of comes from a perception of early on in the game when you only have two or three factions, everything seems like it can be fully, fully unique. And, you know, OK, well, why, you know, why do, you know, uh, the same ability? We can just make a slightly different version of it. But that's also something that we made an effort to uh, refine in the 2021 updates because we simply didn't want ability bloat because that is its own problem. If everything were unique, then everything's unique. You have to know everything. And that just comes think about daunting that is for the casual player. But, you know, okay, I know what Sundering does. I know what, like, you know, Indomitable Presence does. You know, uh, I know what Glory Seeker does. Well, okay, that one's a bad example because it's, uh, it's actually a unit name. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a pop quiz for the people at home. 
<laughs> but like you know, Warcry, Outflank, these common effects here that you know do show up. You know, there are some people that take offense to the fact that you know units can somehow share tactics when it's all the same time mm-hmm. period and knights are fighting knights. Yeah, I'd I'd like to add that um, once again, like even though it it's all units from the same period, um, that we do. I think that the way that we differ factions is how much of each ability they all have access to, right? And that has a lot to do with with faction identity in itself, right? And not how many exclusive things they have, but how 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 can me- messing around with abilities that are overall like general that affect everyone how can how can you just messing with these quantities actually create uniqueness within factions right i think that's very interesting and i also like to think that these changes um are are pushing us forward right (laughs) once again this is not the last um update ever of course right we're we're gonna have more updates but we need a put this one through to see once again how players are going to experiment and what is the result of this right so it's always this recycling right and this renewal of releasing something waiting for the dust to settle and then releasing something else and and on it and so right. on and, and so, so on. Said, just the quantities of abilities showing up in factions can define them for example like lannisters you don't see the largest amount of combat capabilities and then you look over it's like okay you can have the subsect in there of like the mountain and his men you know they're gonna actually have combat capable guys so that changes the play style meanwhile starks for example you know they are not going to have uh, anything that's like Trixie or subterfuge or anything so you know you might have abilities to represent that showing up very sparsely um i think a good example of this is you can see some factions only like a specific character would have an ability whereas you can look into another faction and it is a common thing to show up outflank is actually the one that comes to mind where that's typically rare in factions but then we look at the Greyjoys and they have a common attachment that they can just get outflank um now granted that is still in itself limited but it's still plays to the nature of this faction okay they're very mobile they can be very tricksy they're going to hit you from you know unknown sides and everything that defines that uh, you know, it's been great seeing you on stream and, and having the visions and the flames kick back up, uh, you know, getting us reinvigorated for A Song of Ice and Fire and the things to come in the year. I hope you guys are excited as we are to get these out there and uh, see people messing around and giving them yeah. feedback. Thank you very much, Chase. And once again, I, I hope you and everyone else playing out there is is enjoying this new update. And um, we we hope to have solved a lot of issues and we're ready to tackle the new ones. Right. <laughs> and I actually have a, a favor. Uh, I've always <laughs> wanted to do your outro. So when uh, can you, when it's time, can, <laughs> do, I don't know if I'm allowed. Yeah, for a nominal fee, uh, you could definitely. <laughs> uh, get, uh, well, I'm, can we trade you a man? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Would, yeah, absolutely. If you want to, if you want to lead us out, Bobby, you can do the. I honors. don't know if Michael wants to say something. Oh, I am just uh, sitting here waiting for this outro. <laughs> <laughs> okay then Wait, so, you, wanted, you guys want to do it together you could do like a three two one and... nope oh, no. <laughs> ahead, proud, yeah. <laughs> all right i hope you get your miniatures on the table what 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 what